And in this atmosphere and with a standing ovation, I want us to welcome the set man tonight. Our father, an international executive council member of the Church of Pentecost, Apostle Dr. Amos Jimmy Markin. Lift your voice and give God praise. 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 Precious people, praise the Lord. It's a great privilege to be together again the second day of our fire conference 2023. So too many people worry themselves about too many things, but the answer is still the same. I will send you the promise of the Father. Shout hallelujah. Tonight, our quest is, if it is he that makes the dry land fruitful and the fruitful land a forest, then how can I encounter him? Praise the Lord. So tonight, encountering the spirit of Pentecost, a call to repentance for ourselves and the nations. And I'm reading two passages of scriptures. The first one is in Joel chapter 2, verse 12 to 17. And I will read Acts chapter 3, verse 37 to 39. Tonight, encountering the spirit of Pentecost. Yesterday in the morning, I began laying the foundation for the promise to make a demand upon the Most High to send forth rains of the Pentecostal spirit, the spirit of restoration and revival upon his church and in the nation. Why? Because I believe that that is what we need now. Lift up your two hands and say, bring forth your spirit. Bring forth your spirit. Say it with passion. Bring forth your spirit. Say, bring it into my life. Bring it into my, bring it into my family. Bring it into, my family. Bring it into this nation. And tomorrow I'm going to try the grace of God to provoke you with identifying that spirit. Amen. Shout amen. amen. But I have come to confirm to you again, dear friends, that I believe in revival. Amen. I believe in a season of refreshing from the presence of God to the soul that is famishing. I believe in a period of an awakening and a period of renewal and a period of restoration shout hallelujah shout hallelujah a period where god suddenly comes in and visits his people and changes their story and changes the status quo For where the nations of the world are getting to and for where the churches today are running into, what will salvage our situation, especially those of us living in this part of the world, has gone beyond the effort of any man. The answer will only be when the grace of God brings a season of refreshing upon his people. Because that was the state which the people of Israel have gotten into. They have messed up with God. And because of that, the Bible says years have come. That all the years I have of them has been years that the cankerworm and the caterpillar and the palmerworm and those strong armies which were not sent by their enemies. See? 
Too many people often think that when they are in such situations like this, it is their enemies that sent it. But the Bible says, those years were years which the Lord himself has sent. Their lands have become dry. Their lives have become empty. They live all kinds of pretentious lives. But deep down inside, they know that things are not going right. I'm still preaching. Let this saint shout and say amen. amen. See, these technologies, revival and refreshing and awakening and renewal and restoration have always received all kinds of theological battles. And they may be different for different groups of people depending on their Christian orientations or beliefs. Their purposes or observations and sometimes how long they have been in existence. But I said yesterday that no matter the terminology used and the theological interpretation, it does not matter much. The reality is that there is a season when spirituality is at its lowest ebb. Oh, yes. Because I, 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 I get confused. When I see people just trooping into places where they know that this woman doesn't carry God. But the place is full. And I ask myself, how did they get there? What is it that is bringing them here? What hungry have they become? Can I still preach? Can I still preach? It affects the life of the people of God and the nations. And there is the need for God to intervene. And I pray that God will intervene tonight. Lift up your right hand wherever you are for me to say something to you. The almighty God is looking for your attention. He's been looking for your attention for a very long time. In 1985, I was walking through the streets of Takrad when I saw a young man sitting by a fence, drunk and dope. Then the Spirit of the Lord said to me, Go to him, make him a friend, and speak to him. So I did. Then he said, speak to him and let him hear that I'm giving him salvation today. But in a short while, I will make him great. Amen. And I will put divine substance into his hands. But afterwards, he should be careful. Close to me, became my friend. Suddenly, without any Substance and wealth began to come. Join a political party, and his whole life was messed up. Lost every substance in his hands. But when he was looking for it back, he couldn't look for it from God, going to all kinds of obscure places looking for it. But the truth is that you could be found in that same place. Now you have lost everything and you long to have it back. That is not where it is it. Almighty God is looking for you. He's looking for you wherever you are so that he will show you some mercy and pour forth his spirit upon you once again. It was like Moses desiring to please God, desiring to do the thing that God wants him to do. He messed up. Trained in the palace of the king as a prince, trained at the place of the greatest university of that civilization, a scientist, raised as a general of the army, he left his father's house and for 40 years, he was walking about. Disguised himself in another clothes. 
so that nobody will be able to see him because they hang around his neck a record of evil. Somebody being sought after. For 40 years, he has obscured himself. But the truth is that God was looking for him. God was looking for him just like he's looking for him but he has been so attracted by some things that he cannot hear God I pray that God will cause you to listen to him tonight somebody shout amen, amen. but one day after 40 years the Bible says he saw a strange scene and when he turned himself to look God spoke to Moses the only thing that God is looking for you is your attention. You've been thinking about your past for too long. You've been thinking about what you could not do for too long. But God is looking for your attention. Shout hallelujah. You may have gone very far away. Obscured with everything but God. Engrossed with your past mistakes and failure and guilt and weakness and inabilities and the thought of your future. Too far drawn to have his attention. But guess what? It is unbelievable what God can do to a man or woman who decides to turn aside and look at him. Punch the person beside him and tell him, look. God is looking for your attention. No matter how deep you may have gone. No matter how pretentious you may have been. He's looking for you. I can continue. Ask me to continue. These days are very perilous times. They mark the description of the last days. And in this season and time, the scriptures are fulfilled in our very eyes. The character and nature, nature of our nations and societies and their people are just as it is described in 2 Timothy chapter 3. Men have become lovers of themselves. Lovers of money, boastful, Proud blasphemous, disobedience to parents, unthankful and unholy, unloving and unforget, unforgiven, slanderous, without self control, brutal, despises the things that are good and traitors, headstrong and haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And you know what? The Bible says they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power of it. Spirituality and godliness has come to its lowest ebb. There is all kinds of dryness and emptiness and unresponsiveness to God and his divine spirit. Everything in church life has become ordinary. There is spiritual deadness and blindness. The sinfulness of sin and the decadence of society. And the evil effects of disobedience and sin doesn't matter anymore. In church life today, dependency on faith in God and the supernatural is completely gone. But for those of you who are sitting in this place, you are blessed. Yeah. Uh, you didn't say a proper amen. Yeah. You are blessed to have ministers like these ones who are filled with the Spirit of God. Shout hallelujah. But not in many other places. The only remedy, my opinion, is to cry to God for a season of visitation. Lift up your two hands and say, God, visit us. And even sitting in this place, take a record of yourself. 
You used to be so pious for God that when it is time for church, something ripples inside you. But what suddenly became of that first love which you received? What has taken it over? One young lady told me, he said, but pastor, you know, now I have, a, I have a husband and I have three children. But I said, when you do not have one, I saw how you cried for one. Can you ask me to stop preaching? We need to call on God for mercy. Lift up your two hands to bring back to the church and the nations a season of refreshing from his presence. Bring a season of refreshing to your church. That will be accompanied by the restoration of all things that we have lost through apathy and sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The only remedy, my opinion today, is to cry to God for a visitation. The prophet Joel, in Joel chapter 2, verse 12 to 17 says, Blow the trumpet. Consecrate a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregations like Pastor Tony is doing. Then he says, assemble the elders. Gather the children and the nursing babies. And he says, it is so important that let even the bridegroom who has married just last Sunday come out of his chamber. And let the bride come out from his dressing room. Then he says, let the priest and who minister to the Lord weep between the porch and the altar. Let him spare your people, O Lord, and do not give your heritage to reproach, that the nations should rule over them. Why should they say among the people, where is their God? And everybody in this nation is asking that question. Because it has been declared to us that 71% of this nation are Christians. And so they ask, where is the God that they talk about? And for us Pentecostals, they ask us. After all, they are crying and they are speaking in tongues. Where is their God? Look into my eyes, brothers. It looks as though there is no answer to the remedy of the situations of this land. Suddenly, people, especially of Africa, yeah, yeah, mobo. as though we have no leaders and we have no people that lead us. This season is not a season of eating and sleeping, but a season of lifting our voice to God. That he will come out with mercy towards us. Now therefore, says the Lord. Everybody say with me, now therefore. Says the Lord. Turn to me with all your heart. With fasting, with weeping, with mourning. So rend your heart. And not your garment. Return to the Lord your God and is gracious and merciful. He's slow to anger and of great kindness. He will relent from doing harm. Who knows if he will turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Shout hallelujah. How does this Pentecostal spirit or the spirit of Pentecostal and revival come?
Number one, it comes when the people of God realize their state and call upon God in biblical prayer for mercy to send them a visitation. And this is prompted by God himself. If God desires mercy for his people, the first thing he does is to set them ablaze in prayer. It is the people who understand these things I'm talking about who cries and prays and reach out to God that he answers and suddenly comes. I will tell you a truth that for some of the people that had really seen God when he had come, when they encounter our form of revival, they cry. And they ask questions. I have walked into a meeting before. And I was late. Because I was still in prayer. I had prayed until 3 o'clock. Walked into the meeting and the meeting had started from morning. And they have been there all day. The senior house master was holding the hymn book, standing in front of the student, singing, Holy, Holy, Lord God Almighty. Then all of a sudden, the Spirit of the Lord moved. Amen. Amen. It started from the platform where he was. And when he came down under the pulpit, when I had entered, I said to myself, I better kneel down before I go under. And everybody in the room, people outside were running and coming. And they were speaking. Some of them have committed heinous crime. They were saying their crimes and they were shouting and screaming and relenting the thing that they have done in the past. This is what we long for, that men will leave their evil and give their whole hearts to God. When they have found God, this nation will be healed. Send us your spirit, O oh God. For we long for it. It is a season when the people of God call for a solemn fast. It is a season when there is a declaration of a season of repentance. Everybody say it. Repentance. Say it with passion. Say it again. Not too long ago, I was saying it somewhere. That the greatest slogan of Pentecostals is holiness. And so when I say holiness, respond just like you do. Holiness. Oh, come on, say it with passion. So he's holy. Because he doesn't drink. He doesn't smoke. He doesn't even dance. But let me go on and ask. So that holy man. Is he capable of unforgiving other people around him? What about boasting? What about pride? What about unforgiveness? Huh? And so our lifestyles have suddenly changed to become something else. And somebody asks, is there any longer godliness? Yet the people are calling for the spirit to come. He doesn't come like that. Repentance is always the first requirement on the side of the people calling on God. And it is the greatest need of the church today. Shout amen. Amen. Otherwise, we will cry and cry for a long time. Mine is just to lay the foundation. But yours is to take it. After I am done and you have taken it, everything you will desire will be yours. 
Shout a better amen. amen. I was sitting in my office when this dear precious lady, a women's leader of a very powerful congregation, walked into my office. Pastor, I have been coming here since you came. My problem is not two. It's only one. My husband is a drunkard. And he's been drinking all the time. I have prayed and fasted. He still keeps drinking. So I heard the word of the Lord. I looked into her eyes and I said, which of the drinks does he like? Is it gin or champagne or aquatashi or the other brother? Doka or Guinness? See, he is He likes all of them. So what happens to him? He said he drinks until he will sleep in the gutter. And for the past several years, he has never brought any money to the house before. Can I still preach? Can I still preach? You didn't come to hear this. Hello? You came to hear fire, fire. I'm not firing you now. I'm giving you the basics. Amen. And so, I looked into his eyes and I said, does he like champagne? He said, yes, very much. How about Guinness? He said, his best is Apio. So I said, then when you get home, Get some apio on the table where he eats his food. He looked into my eyes. But listen, as I'm talking to you, don't go and give it to your husband. No. This was a word for that woman at that time. He said, Sofu, I am not going to die. I am I mean, she got angry. The next several weeks, I wasn't his friend. He wouldn't even come to church. Then he became worse. Are you here? He drank until he was knocked down by a car. And people bundled him to his house. He ran the very first day, very morning, into my house. And I said, he said, Pastor, he has become worse. He was nearly knocked down by a car yesterday. And I said, so you brought him home? He said, yes. I let him lie at the house. When you finish the cooking, which one does he like best? He said, I can start with Guinness. I said, add the apetashi. Put it on his desk. Let him drink. So he drank the apetashi and drank the Guinness. And he couldn't eat the food. He slept on the dining table. The next day, he came back from work a little early. When he came to where his food was, the patashi was there. The Guinness was there. He drank, slept on the table. He got angry and came back to me and said, but you have strength. Bundle him after he has drank. Put him on his bed. But on the third day, he ate before he drank. Hello? Then he came back angrier than before and said, Pastor, Obey didn't obey Mutsidemi, but the Miska could tap a tissue. Lam damn a bean, Bessia bar, Omphis came with you, don't no nombo nonda. So I put my hands in my pocket, took money, and give it to her. And I said, Use this money, buy it for him to drink. He's drunk and drunk and drunk. But from that day on, every day, he will come home and drink it. Then one day, he looked into his wife's eyes and asked her, Mansa, where do you, have you been getting this money that you have been buying this apatashi for me to drink? Then he said, Oh, so Jimmy. Gave me the money. Say, ah, Radimeu. So it is also for some money that I've been using to drink like this. Oh, I beg you, from today, I won't drink again. 
I wouldn't drink or suffer with money. Then after a while, when it was a month, he took his pay for the first time in several years and came home with the money and gave it to the woman and said, this is my pay. Today, I don't owe Daviyama any money for that one. But take me to your pastor. They came very early in the morning. By the time I got to the office, they were sitting there. And I said, tell me my story. The man began to cry. Look into my eyes, everyone. He began to cry. The things that moves us, unable to move on and to have the spirit come, are very little things. They are not big things. He said, Pastor, I've never been happy since I married my wife. She's the only woman I've ever loved. Yet he never loves me back. Even when I speak, it irritates her. He, she is the one that drives me away from the house because I cannot even get her to talk to her because every day she is at church. She drove me out and out and out until I cannot even come close to her. But when I go to Davi, she will chat with me. I will take her drink. She will even give me some on credit. And that kept me out. I looked into the woman's eyes for the first time. I saw her crying, bowing down, telling her, I'm sorry. That's what I'm talking about. This spirit cannot come. There is always not two things, but only one. They are not things that speaks loudest. Some of your young people who are tailors take people's dresses and they will not sew it for them on time. Some of our young people, you give them a job and they will not even look at the job they are doing, yet they are praying for the spirit. Some of the people, you give them a land to look after, they will not, they will take all the money in the name of let me turn my eyes this way because you are not like that. In the name of elders. They will not pay back. And so in the midst of our holiness, we don't have any credibility on our lives. But we are crying for the spirit. The fact is that this spirit will not come until we repent. Ah, Chimochi, you are crumb, my mum, fine. Yeah, Coco could join no one crana. Ada, I mean, my uncle, my uncle, he Ada, no point in war him, but the Abu Bochinga. Ne, never from my police were her. I'm such a nebison, I said. What can be? Would it be a may? Would it be a may? Listen, you need chaplain and yet them are not. Mr. Dean, they be yet them are not. So, being Paul Bua or Tumu Frobia catch and there, Major Petty, and Mr. Moore, Namua, Shanetama member, he doesn't need a will. He should be comfortable enough to come to me as a pastor and give me his land document. He will not die before I take it. That's what I'm talking about. There cannot possibly be any race of restoration until there comes first a period of repentance from dead works and faith towards God. Somebody hearing me can scream and say, Amen. Amen. The Apostle Peter on the day of Pentecost laid down the procedure very clearly. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said to them, Repent. Everybody say, Repent. Repent. 
and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive hello the gift of the Spirit for the promises to you and to your children and to all who are afar of as many as the Lord our call shall call. The first requirement to encounter the Spirit is a call to repentance. Amen. Yes. The second is baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus. I'm not talking about that. Then you will receive the Spirit will come. A season of refreshing will come upon you. I met a young woman. I was going to preach in a place called Polikwani in South Africa in the hotel we slept in Johannesburg. A young, wonderful, beautiful lady was serving us. As soon as I saw her, the Spirit of the Lord asked me and told her, pack your things and go back home. So I looked into her eyes and I said, it would be better for you to pack your things and go back home. Where is your husband? Where is your husband? Where is your husband? South Africa. But money is around her feet. She cannot say it. She started crying. Came to sit in the service on Sunday. Whilst I was preaching, she was looking into my eyes as if I would change my mind. When they closed the meeting, she came to tell me, I have packed. I am going back. I don't know how her husband and I have been crying. But it is not two things or three it is always one how many of you want the spirit to come tonight it is not always two or three repentance is and has always preceded every move of god both in the old and new testament john the baptist came preaching repentance jesus commences preaching preaching repentance the early disciples started their ministry preaching repentance repentance from dead works and faith toward god is the foundation of the christian doctrine and it is the access to all our salvation today there are more unrepented people in the church than outside the church people carry their bags looking deliverance everywhere but cannot get because they are still hooked to their persons they have one leg outside and another one inside they are not really members of the church because they have not repented or been baptized into the church the holy scripture shows clearly a pattern for entering into the things of god and being a partaker of his divine power to enter and to be a member of the new testament local church there is a clear three gateway passage who serves as an entrance or initiation. And the first is always repentance. And this repentance is a decision. Amen? It's always a decision. I have been conducting deliverances for the years I do not know about. The people that come and they fall the way they fall and we cast the things out of them the way we cast them out are the same people that fall the way they fall. Amen. And even if they are casted out, they go back and they still come back. And when you try to find out, it is always not far from this. Only one. God is desiring to bless you. But his blessing is not like that of the world. One of his feet is inside the church. One of it is outside the church. Sister, will you stop following that woman's husband? He said, then where will I have my collection? And so for several years, sitting inside here, one of his legs is sitting outside. And one of the legs is sitting inside. And for some of you young people, you have been looking for marriage for a long time. You have not left your boyfriend. And some of them even are doing it in the name of courtship. But the thing they do in the name of courtship. I wonder whether bringing the English assemblies is better or not bringing it is better.
You will interview two young people whose marriages are getting to the rock. And always the reason we emerge that the foundations has been destroyed. The young people are getting angry with the old man. But scream if you are here. Am I talking to young people? How many of you want the spirit to come upon your life and be blessed? Look, it shall come to pass when you do all these things. Young men will be craving for you. Several of them will come and you will not know which one you will have to take. It is a one time decisive experience. Repentance is not a kind of emotion you receive. Get back to your sins and go back again. You cannot work out some kind of religious experience. Repentance means a change of mind or the way of doing things. It is a change of lordship. The devil used to be your master and lord. Now you do not serve him anymore. Jesus is now your lord and your master. Stop the way of doing things. Start doing the right things. It is a circumcision of the heart and mind. And the scripture we read said, Come, not rending your garment, but rend your hearts. Amen. Shout amen. amen. Shout amen. amen. Oh Lord, you have gone away from us for so long. We don't know what to do. All our things are getting out. He said, come back. But in your coming back, rend your hearts. And not your garments. You have been in that desolation for so long. How did you get that broke which you have got into? Just a disobedience. When I was a very young preacher, I was coming from my house. I live in a place called Eskafar Mantem. With my tracts and preaching, Papa, whilst I was walking through the lane, I saw a mad woman sitting behind the gutter at the back of a house. Then I passed by her. She called me back and said, come back, young man. I am not a mad woman. I am a prophet just like you. Then she said to me, in all your preaching, do not ever be like me. I am a prophet just like you. Then I said, how did it happen? She said, I was in the old apostolic church and I was a prophetess. One day, the spirit of the Lord spoke to me, go and sit in the train which is going towards Awasu. A certain woman will come and sit beside you. When she has sat down, she will leave a substance behind. Pick it. When she's going, take it and give it to her. Don't open it. Then she said, my son, I did. I sat in the train on the way to Awasu. A crying, sleepy woman came in. And when she sat, she left. Cigarette be one more friend of Doba. Doba, what when it's real down away, Bedo, but cigarette no con con chancing. And OJ Doba, chancing, no, or this sea, Ninchen. When the woman took the rubber chance, she opened it and it was full of polished gold. Eminem, I say, now a gentleman is here, a man from Mabafa. So when she got up and she was going, I took it. And I said, What happens to you when you took it? He said, My son, may it never happen to you. As long as you preach. I brought it to my house. But it was too late for me. The woman was nowhere to be found. From that day, myself and everybody close to me 
has been mad. Today, we are living in a generation of carelessness where greed and, and all kinds of things has consumed us as church. I understand that I'm not speaking to you, but I'm speaking on the air. Let somebody who hears my voice hear this. This is a season of repentance upon this land. That covetousness and greed and wickedness has eaten us, us inside and outside the church. Whether we are young people, every young man wants to get rich by the next day. Every young man. As though riches are everything in this land. And they say, pray for us. We want to get very, 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 very rich. When God wants to bless you, he blesses you regardless. The Bible says to repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Ask me to stop preaching. Ask me to stop preaching. I know uh, I've not come to tell you what you want. But don't mind me too much. Shout amen. amen. Shout amen. Amen. Shout amen. amen. Jesus is now your master and law. Stop the way of doing things. Start doing the right things. It's a circumcision of your heart and not your garment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Then the Spirit of God will come upon you. Because when the Spirit of God comes, God uses that Spirit as a seal. To seal your life. Amen? Amen? So what does this seal mean? It means Jesus places a mark of ownership upon you and declares you as his treasured possession. And that is the important thing. Why you must keep yourself for him. You see, Lift up your right hand. I want to tell you from two things before I sit down tonight. The purpose of your redemption and call, your calling is clear. To understand the biblical call for repentance, there is the need to know the purpose of your redemption and calling. The Old Testament is a copy of a shadow of the New Testament. What this means is that what you find in the Old Testament finds its real meaning in the explanation in the New Testament. The pathing of the redemption of the people of Israel in the Old Testament from Egypt and hands of Pharaoh, it's a pattern for the redemption of the people of God in the New Testament. But that of the new is a redemption from the hands of Satan and sin. And the purpose for which God delivered them from the hands of Pharaoh is the same as that of the redemption of the church from the hands of Satan and sin. The Almighty God who redeemed Israel from Egypt and the hands of Pharaoh had a purpose. Everybody say he had a purpose. His divine purpose is to call them to himself. Put your hands here. He called them to what? Isaiah, Exodus chapter 19, verse 4 and 5. Let us read it together. Your redemption has a purpose. Let us read it together, everyone. And how I bore you on eagle's wing and brought you to... To read the next verse, verse 5. Then you shall be what? To me, for all the earth is what? So read Deuteronomy 7, verse 6 to 8. The, this means that they are his property. They belong to him. They are no longer of themselves. Read Deuteronomy 7, 6 and 8. Let's read. For you are a holy people to the Lord your God. Go. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for a special treasure above all the treasures of the face of the earth. And so they belong to God as a holy nation set apart to God. 
And God guards them with jealous eyes. He does not share them with anything or anybody. They are his treasured possession, Deuteronomy 14.2. And that is why the Ten Commandments begin by saying this. Exodus 20, verse 1 to 5b. Let's read it. Together, everyone. Go. Exodus chapter 20. Go, verse 1. And God spoke these words to Sam, saying, Go on. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the hand of bondage. Three. You. Sh you. Go. You shall have no other God for me. Go on, for you shall not make for yourself a craving image. Any likeness of anything that is of heaven above, or that is in the air beneath, or that is in the waters under the earth. Verse 5. You shall not bow to them or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, I am, I am, I am. So you belong to him. He saved you to himself. Put your hands here. When you are a man, you He saved you to himself. He has declared by his own oath that he will not share you with anyone. And the Bible says, have no other God because I am jealous over you. Because I am what? I am jealous over you. In case you don't know, I have come to town to tell you tonight that you are not yourself. You belong to God. You are his property. He knows you by name. You are his. And he has vowed not to share you with anybody. You are his treasured possession. Too many people come to church because they come to see their pastor. Or they come to serve their pastor. One policeman told me, say, Pastor, after this, your choir, it is because of you that they come. When they hear your name, they come for practice. When they don't hear your name, they misbehave. I look at the policeman. But he was speaking the truth. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9, read it for me quickly. In much the same way, the church has become the spiritual Israel through Christ. Let us all read it together. The purpose of our redemption is just as this. He called us to himself. Go on. But you. Go on. Go on. Go on. Go on. Mm. Mm. And shout and say amen. amen. So in Matthew 22, the teacher asked Jesus, what is the greatest of the commandments? He said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. Put your hands here. With all your soul. With all your entire mind. And this is the first and the great commandments. And the Lord does not share us with anything or anybody. Put your hands here. And look into my eyes. Can I tell you to your face? You belong to him. Amen. You are his property. Amen. He doesn't share you with anybody. Amen. When you came, he sealed you with his spirit. And declared you his property. And he doesn't share you with anybody. And so if you are a young woman working for your boss and he start tapping you by the back and he's not your husband, let him know that Jesus is your husband. When they are sharing money and the money does not belong to you, don't take your part. Let them know that in your father's house that is not done. You belong to God. 
You are his property. He set his eyes of jealousy upon you. And the reason why he will send the spirit to come and dwell in you is that the spirit is coming to you to declare you a no-go area for the devil. And that is why he sent the spirit in our hearts. And the Bible says that spirit in our hearts cries, Abba, Father. Shout it and say it, Abba, Father. So in order for God to fulfill this and keep us as his own, he keeps to hold an earnest, and this earnest he has by sending his own spirit into us, showing that we belong to him. Oh, I love that one. That which brings you to the saving grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus is in the first place is the Holy Spirit. It is he who convicts sin and righteousness. As soon as you have believed, confess and accept Jesus into your life, he sends his Holy Spirit to seal you as his property. And it begins from there. And it is a call of separation from the world to God. Lift up your two hands. Let me declare some things to you. Uh, listen. How many of you still want the Spirit come? God is calling you onto a certain place. I haven't seen it. Are PRWC people here? Scream and say we are here. God is calling you to a life of holiness. The child of God is set aside as holy to God. And it is the first demand and requirement of God. The Old Testament presents us clearly with this. That as the Lord is holy, so does he want us to be holy unto him. Because without holiness, the Bible says it's virtually impossible to please him. The Lord God demands that the priest of the Old Testament should be adorned from top to bottom with holiness and inscribed on his forehead the inscription, Holiness unto the Lord. Shout Amen. The New Testament affirms this purpose of choosing us in him before the foundation of the earth is to be holy and blameless before him in love. Ephesians 1, 3 to 4. Holiness transcends the earth to eternity. It is the preserve of heaven. And his purpose for redeeming us was to present us holy to himself. He brought us out of sin, shame, and guilt that we might live chaste, pure, and holy before him in truth. Hallelujah. There is a very powerful phrase in scripture in Romans 1, 4. It says, concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was born of the seed of David according to the flesh and declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. This spirit of holiness, it what Hebrews 9, 14 refers to as the eternal spirit which is able to wash our conscience and preserve us holy. Lift up your right hand and I'll lift another one. God is calling you and I into the place of sacrifice. This God who has called us to himself demands of us a sacrifice. But in our case, he demands a sacrifice which is our living bodies. Romans 12, 1 and 2, he demands for us to be sold out to him in total surrender as an offering being bent on the altar but alive. And that offering must be an excellent one. That is what Jesus meant when he said we should take up our cross and follow him. Number three, lift your right hand again. God is calling us to a, to a life of worship. And righteousness. Incidentally, anytime you read this Bible, everywhere worship is mentioned, you go a little steps and you find the word righteousness. Worship and righteousness always goes together. 
And for all of them who are looking for that spirit of Pentecost to come, the premise is this. God is calling us to a place of worship. A place of worship and righteousness. The last one which I will say today is that he's calling this church to a place of divine service. You didn't hear that. You didn't hear that. One day I was reading the Bible in the gospel according to John. And I saw John talking to his disciples. And then he saw Jesus coming. So he told them, this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The next day, the Bible said, while they were moving about again, he saw Jesus coming again. And he gave a more powerful testimony. Say, ah, look at him. This is the one whose shoe lashes I am unworthy to untie. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The Bible says, when the disciples heard John, they followed Jesus. They did what? From that day on, I said to myself, oh God, help me. That wherever I find myself preaching the gospel or preaching in the church, the people who hear me will not follow me, but they will follow Jesus. That they will follow Jesus. My brother, this is the service for which God has called you and I into. That we will be able to empty ourselves. That our very system and personality will represent nothing but Jesus. When I sold my chores, the people will follow Jesus. Then I remembered my mother. Now I remembered her friends. Hmm? This is a... a what is his name? Her name, Pooh. Mary. Hey. Do you know your mother? When she sells in the market, people follow her to the church. I heard the testimony. And it was so plenty in our church. There are services. Many times in our church, the people that did miracles and healing, nobody saw them. Like evangelist Hayford and the rest of them. This woman who was at a, at a BA far away, who was doing miracles and signs and wonders, she was a cripple. And one of the pastors prayed for him. As soon as they finished praying for the sick, they move away. In Cape Coast and everywhere, when they look at the sick people and when they pray the sick, they move away. They don't draw any attention even to themselves. They have come to serve God and the living God. Look at this. Sitting here is a call to service. Everybody scream and say a call to service. To the usher, it is what? To the, to the minstrel, it is what? To the deacons, it is what? To the protocol, it is what? To the ushers, it is what? To the deaconesses, it is what? To the pastors, it is what? A call to the service of the almighty God. He brought us to himself that we will serve him. Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 22. Romans chapter 12 verse 1 to 10. We are called to the service of the Lord. Psalm 100 verse 2. We are servants of the living God. And guess what? God tests the service of everyone he calls. Psalm 2 verse 11. It is probably the first test of everyone God calls. Acts 13 verse 22. You didn't bring it. Psalm 11, 2 verse 11. Bring it. Can we read it? Psalm 2 verse 11. Yeah. 
No, read it again. Can the two of them to go together? Hmm? Read it again. Bring it back. What it means is that even when I am happy and I'm in church and I'm jumping up and down for the abundance of resources that God has given me, I should do is still trembling. Having at the back of my mind that I must fear the Lord even in that. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. And that is the test. How many of you want to be great? I can't see your hands. You want to be great. The first test of God for the greatness of everyone is service. Acts 13 verse 22. Go on. Go on. So he doesn't remove anybody by heart. He removes them that he will find people of his own heart to put them in that place. You want to overtake your master. That is the way. Service. Everybody say it. Say it with passion. Say it again. May the Lord bring you to that place. Then his spirit will come upon you then that spirit that will come upon you will be genuine. All your life will be rendered as service. One day will be paraded and everybody's record will be laid down. But guess what? Some of the people that you do not even respect too much may pass when you have not passed. May the Lord help us. May the Lord bend our hearts so that the season of refreshing will come upon us. You are healed by the word I have spoken to you. In Jesus' name, shout and say amen. amen. Tomorrow, I'm going to talk about weightier things than this. It will not be a season of screaming. But I will tell you a mystery identifying the spirit of Pentecost. Rise up on your feet. I wish you can see what I can see. I can see your heart getting broken. I can see it. I can see it. It is not inside the noise. No. But there is a season when God comes to people. When he sent for his spirit. When you go deep down inside of you. And look inside your spirit. Mm -hmm. Inside your spirit. The season of becoming a hypocrite is over. Pretending. Be like you are, but you are not. Those seasons are gone. You don't live for yourself. You live for him. Because you don't belong to yourself. You belong to God. And he doesn't share you with anyone. Lift up your hand. And begin to speak to God. Don't speak in tongues now. Start with a language you understand. And talk to God. Talk to God. Talk to God. Talk to him. Break your heart and not your garment. Rend your heart and not your spirit. Come to the Lord. Come to him right now. 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 I had to take my leaders to go and pray for a young man. Two days ago, the Spirit of God waking me up in the night and said, go back to him again and tell him that the season of his mercy is running out. So I kept it in my heart. Young man, I will in someone, okay, dem we will. Okay, day, Baba. Now I'm going to test it, Dom. 
a cobom pairman. Now, who mobile and son and yammy, Olio, while I start to be you. Wave me, wave me, while I start to be you. And the dollar, moon such a mini baby, pa, Mukumun, a branch, wave me, fee. When you're mock to him, you know, Jegu. But you have to come to yourself. Begin to pray. You can pray. Our Father, we come tonight with our hearts broken. We come tonight with a rendered spirit. We stand in your presence, Almighty God. We are not standing because of our own merits or righteousness or any good thing that we have been able to do but we stand because of the blood of the Lamb we come because of the name that you have given to us and we lift up our hands to you we signify to you that we have come to our wits end we have come to the end of our strength and our abilities for all the things that you ask us not to do, we have done. And the paths you have, you caution us not to chat, we have chat them. But you are a God of mercy. We cannot run away from you. Unto you we come. And as we lift up our hands, let mercies drop like waters. Rain the heavens, oh God. Rend the heavens, O oh God. Rend the heavens, O oh God. Jesus. That you will come down. Yes, Lord. Heal every heart. Heal every soul. Jesus. Heal every spirit. Yes, Send forth rains of revival. Send forth rains of restoration. Send forth rains of awakening. Send forth rains of renewal. Renew our lives, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Jesus. We lift up our hands. Yes, Lord. We have not come to any man, yes, Lord. but we have come to you. Yes, Lord. Touch our hearts. Jesus. Touch us. Do something awesome. We'll give you praise. Hallelujah. His Holy Spirit. You may be seated. You may be seated without a clap offering. Without a clap offering. His Holy Spirit. 